to even if we in marriage engage in excess and unrestrained amorous desire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. One word. Moderation. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, I'm not going to deep in this. Um because remember everything costs energy. Right? Everything mm-hmm. costs energy. Uh do it right. Do it the uh, do it right, you will you will get actual reward from it. You will get actual happiness from it because moderation. Do it wrong, do it like excessively or unhealthily suppressing it or something like that, you're gonna get trouble. Right? Do it right means what? We need to be clear about this. Uh, in the Tai Sang Ga Yin Pian, uh, yeah. so first, for one person to be excessive in sexual desire, right, in and engage in the act, whether by himself or with people outside marriage, we talk about that first. We consider in Buddhism is misconduct. Sexual misconduct from smallest form of penalty, right, is merit being reduced you're um, you're supposed to get say this level of merit you dropped right and beggars beggar as in actually have a you know um, relationship outside uh, marriage you know sexual relationship outside marriage which is very common right we say oh it's really common nowadays common doesn't mean right right we have to be careful about this common doesn't mean right we can't control other people but since we are here on this ship in this boat and we need to understand what it is what is this about it, this is a crucial part of human life because Buddha said if the heart is not filled with sexual desire we were not born in this realm you know if this heart of um, this I in this term is not just love as in pure love it's love tainted with desires with sexual desires and hence we have this realm of desire we call it yu jie like this is literally the definition of our existence form of existence here right there are many forms of existence this form is called sexual i mean it's called desire realm and this desire cannot be narrowly confined to sexual desire it can be all sorts of desire but among all sorts of desire the one that is strongest is sexual desire and this is because our attachments to our body and our body seeks a lot of pleasure pleasure from this and people who liberated from this pleasure they don't do it by overly suppressing it that's not helping you it's going to make you worse they replace it with chan yue in zen we call it the pleasure of meditative tranquility meditation and that meditation pleasure is not just oh I feel good my bone in, my whole body is like light and peace more than that they literally get the level of pleasure from pure meditative cultivation that means a lot of restraint discipline but they also engage in meditation for a prolonged period in the right direction right they're not attached to form and formless they will get that level of joy and that joy can be attained in the first level of Form realm. Why do I mention this? Because this is the cosmology. This is the perspective, big picture I want to share from Buddhist point of view in terms of sex. It's not just about those micro stuff we currently facing right now. You know, with the identity and all that orientation stuff. That thing we put it aside, right? We have bigger things to worry, bigger fish to fry, and this is the bigger fish. You can get joy from that level of. F- for meditation that means no engagement in sexual desires right and that's how everyone other than the special method can should go through have to go through in order to attain enlightenment they replace this desire because desire brings happiness full sense of happiness I'm saying full sense as in it does not last right if it lasts forever that is real happiness that's how we should call it but if you're just happy because you have that excitement and that happiness goes away when the excitement is gone it's more like excitement rather than real happiness from inside so it will not help you alleviate from suffering instead it will give you more sufferings 
that's a rational mind talking of course i'm no saint out on this as well right we we, we still need to work on this so what we talk about in six realms and outside six realms this is still in six realms but even in six realms if you're able to let go of replace the joy the joy the the pleasure you get from sexual conduct right by having a pure meditative cultivation uh, I, I will get in details of that in the future maybe um, just read on Chan Yue right just in Chinese we call Chan Yue so the joy from uh, from from meditation and if you do it long enough the result is the world free of this kind of male and female that means there's no argument about orientation because there's nothing about that I'm talking about fundamentally right there's no something called male there's no something called female in the world of form rim they are all one look you can call them a male each look or female each look doesn't matter that mindset is only bound to this lower rim it's like animal defining themselves that way we don't have defining ourselves like that however we still do so so what I'm trying to say is this is the big picture on this thing that is very mundane yet something that bounds us to this world um not just the conduct, but also the attachment, you know, the, the thing we call love. Um, compassion is the purified form of it. As in, p- compassion is you no longer, it's a, re- it's a love with uh, wisdom, right? Uh, it does not bound by form. You still can have family, like Bodhisattva appears with family, and they still have children and all that in the right way, right? For they didn't do sexual misconduct and everything. But they do not. It's like saying that river water is water, but the sea water is not water, right? So if you only get get your source of water from say a creek compared to a huge lake, you know, right, or a huge river, right? Bodhisattva's joy came from a huge river. Our our joy only came from a creek, and if we define that, oh, this is how we get joy from. But for Bodhisattva, he has a lot or a place, a lot of source to get that pleasure from. He does not need to rely on that one thing. In fact, he understands the dangers of stucking in there because you would get lower and lower into hell realm because sexual misconduct is a huge thing. It, it develops into all sorts of unlimited, just like what I mentioned just now, unfettered desires. And that is a bottomless pit that can lead you all the way to Avicii hell. Because of that desire, you may be driven to kill people, harm people, stuff like that. Yeah. So it's very dangerous. Um, manage it right. You have a happy family if you are choosing a lay person's life, right? And if you have a higher aspiration and you have a good condition as well, you'll be, you don't have to pursue this path. You can pursue the path of monastics. All right. There are people who do that, which is minorities right minorities right but normal everyday people most of us we might have family and we right to have family and if we have family you should engage in uh, sexual conduct that is within marriage or within one partner that is your legal wife right I know some Catholic saying like that we in this point we align right but at the same pipe time Right? What about now? What about this world we're having? You know, this is not that kind of world anymore. Wedlock is common thing. You know, of, of course there are very traditional families of that. So what can we do? All we can say is, you can lighten the impact. You know, by not going around and do that. You understand this is a serious relationship. You're going in there. You're trying to have a serious connections. You know, heart to heart. And you understand them, you understand the family, they understand you as well. You really know that person, not just driven by pure desires. And you build that strong foundation on that relationship, that means you build a strong foundation in your life and their life and the life around people around you, your friends including. And then you have this kind of conduct together. Even though it's the technical misconduct, it's more stable. Right? And then you build into marriage, proper proper um, alliance in the sense so to speak 
and then you have a healthy structure for the family. All right, and while still you derive pleasure from this by act, uh, activity between husband and wife. But in this in this translation, even within marriage, I will bring an example, right, without saying too much. Why? Why can't we have a fun with that, even with my wife? You're rightfully so, you can. But a prop with your husband, with your wife. Because, let me bring you a story first, from 1930s, right, in nationalist China, right, in China. And there was a master called Master Ying Guang, I think in the circle of Amitabha Pyo Lan, it's common. Everyone knows them. I think in China, a lot of Buddhists know them. He's a great master, enlightened one. He promotes Buddhism, pure land form of Buddhism especially. Master Ching Kong's uh, teacher, Mr. Li, one of the teacher, Mr. Li, being none, is his student, a uh, lay, lay student, all right? And Master Ying Guang has a, a lot of correspondence with the lay Buddhists at the time. At that time, there's no email, so they use... Uh, letters and they say, ask a lot of questions like what we do now with you know Venerable Chengde Venerable Wu Ling Venerable Master Ching Kong he, he was here and Master Wu Xing and etc etc right Q&A so they send a question to him and all sorts of questions with how do I handle my uh, you know my main force stuff or my chanting stuff how do I handle my family so one of the questions talks about you know Sexual conduct within marriage. Of course, if they talk about sexual misconduct, which is common, which is obvious, uh, we shouldn't do that. But what about one within the marriage? All he say is, of course, a normal husband and wife would have that, right? Because this is one of the things you, how you create children. And then those are rational part. And then also, you know, in the right amount, of course, not too much, you won't hurt your body. So we're talking about health and if you're too much you're going to spend your energy too much of course you will know that so another thing is it's dangerous to do it while you're sick if you're too sick so there is a Jisu, right there is a lay buddhist who would write a letter say um yeah well, we do a lot of that and my wife and stuff like that but he's sick and master ying guang say you should not do that when you're sick because you're going to hurt your body your body needs recovery you shouldn't do this kind of uh, energy, uh, energy, like high energy stuff. When your body is weak, it's like trying to climb a mountain when you like feverish. But this is way more than that. You're creating people, so so to speak. So that is one point, right? Another point is um, when he visited him. When he say asked this the first time, he listened and he say, "Let's hold it off, a rain check on that, right? Uh, next time in future." So after that, he came back and I meet Master Ying Guang. And Master Ying Guang uh, was like, maybe he didn't listen to everything because he can see his energy is very low. That means he, he still have that sickly look, at, but at worst, he still do that despite he has a lot of disease, uh, like he has conditions in his body, uh, medical conditions. But he, because as a monk, it's something you don't just say out loud like that. It's a bit awkward, of course. Um, so he feel awkward saying about that. So he just hinting, like, you know, everything we need to have moderation. He just stop it at that. He didn't go too much in detail. But after that, there is, when he go back a few more days, a few more weeks or a few more days were gone, there is news of, uh, you know, opportunity for this lay Buddhist came to his doorstep and say, oh, this um, one of these good, venerable uh, lay Buddhists has passed away. And he's like, oh, I should have warned him directly, frankly, one-to-one, -one, you know, when when I have a chance not just being beat around the bush um, because it's awkward. Even if it's awkward, it saves his life, right? If he can stop doing that just for a few weeks, just recover, and then whatever, he can do whatever when he recover. Mm -hmm. If he can just take a pause of doing this, you know, sexual conduct, when he's sick, he might save his life. Because this is a very energy exerting stuff, of course. Um, so this is one point of, you know, excessive uh, sexual conduct, right? And that's why there's moderation of everything. And joy should not just derive purely on that. This is just an act 
like I say, every deed came out from thoughts, from intention. And if the intention is, how to say, is pure, that conduct does not have to go that way, right? Even in the right context, like husband and wife, it can be done. It shouldn't just purely just about that. It's emotional connection as well. I don't want to go too much in this, but it's also important to know, right? Because target can be the young people as well, even the elderly people, right? They will understand when they get into that point of life, they will be more about family in you know, connection rather than just that. But in Buddhism, what do we talk about this? We talk about this because this is blocking us from focusing on actually going back to pure land or actually attaining enlightenment. And I, like I mentioned, you want to improve your existence, your literal existence, your energy, your form of being from desire realm to form realm. This is the latter approach, one by one, one by one. You need to let go of this. This is number one. So other than ego, sense of self, uh, false sense of self, jian, you need to break down what I, you know, those attachment to body, the desires and all that. That's why Buddha start with that, because that's the hardest thing to let go. And then the rest can you can slowly let go, simmer it down. All right. And that's um, in pure land practice, even though we can just chant Amito for but we still need to focus on Amitofo, not be distracted by this, right? It's hard, it's, um, how to say, it's all about concentration. If we can concentrate on cultivation, letting all this part go, only then we can have guarantees to go to Pure Land. If we can sustain that concentration for a long time and strengthen the willingness, desire to go there, see? Desire to go there, right? It has to be stronger than desire to do this. And 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 then your heart, you know, wanting to help more sentient beings to be liberated from these sufferings. We can go deeper on this next week because this is a huge thing, and we should not be shy away from this now nowadays, right? We may be shy away in these communities, but the wider world does not care. And because of that, and because of me as a lay person, I can say that properly, and also at this age as well, very dangerous, easily swayed by this kind of thing. Uh, we need to work on how to manage our relationship with this kind of act uh, and in the modern context as well, right? In the end of the day, we always need to think about what is the consequences, right? You can have pleasure, you can feel like, you know, you're the most um, charming person in the world, able to get a lot of people to do this with you and some people are proud of that. Of course, we still think this is disgusting in the general world, in the wider world. I'm not talking about just Buddhist community. In the wider world, we still think this is not right. But there are people like that, right? Of course, we understand this is not happiness. This is just flattery. It's false flattery, you know. Ego, empty ego. Real one is actual connection with your partners and all that. And they actually really want to be alive with them. Okay, that's right. That's the right path. That's the better path, right? That's the more stable path, not destructive towards yourself and other people. Because there's another problem of abortion as well, see, in other sensitive topics. Why? Because unfettered sexual desires. Unfettered. And abortion, no matter what spectrum of argument we have, is an act of stopping something from growing. I'm using a very neutral word. No one can deny it. You're stopping something from growing. And that something happens to be a children or pre-children. I don't care where, what form of argument it is. It's meant to be a children and stuff like that. Using whatever explanation we have to justify stopping that thing from growing because we cannot bear the consequences of having sexual misconduct or sex, unfettered sexual conduct is irresponsible. It's like saying I spend a lot of money on my credit card on something because I like to do it on LV bags and fancy cars, but I can't afford it. So I spend it on credit. Now the credit is coming fruition. You're telling me I can just cut off the credit just like that. In financial world, what does that mean? Because I work in there, right? 
What does that mean? That means bankruptcy in worst case. Of course, they can write you off. You can escape. But your habit brings continues. You continue to incur more problems. And borrow from loan shark. Now, this time, they don't give you that kind of benefits because they don't care. They are gangsters. Right? They can cut you in half if they want to. Right? They're not like banks or the proper institution. They just say, oh, okay, I'm going to write you off as bankrupt. Go away. Right? So consequences is there. No matter you cut it off or not cut it off. Right? You abort or not abort. It doesn't matter. You win the argument. You do it. Consequences is very obvious one is your health. Next time you want baby, you might be harder to get one. That's the truth. That's medical. Don't care what you identify as. Right? Your body cannot take this too much. It's going to hurt you. Next time you actually want a baby, then you have a problem. And in this, I'm pretty sure that in the spiritual world, vengeance turns into vengeance. Because we believe in cause and effect. Right? Stopping someone from becoming a human when they have that right condition is causing them to be angry, of course, because they might be able to cultivate. They might be able to be a good person, you know, a very important person able to bring fortune to you as well of course it would be hard for you to take care of them when you grow up that's the point of argument why do I have to go through all these sufferings it's a shortcut mindset because there's no karmic understanding karmic understanding is not religion it's like paying debt it's a basic fundamental understanding of how human world works you owe people you pay people you don't owe people and not paying them and expanded horizon you will pay them even though you die because your form does not rest stop forming after you die you will continue paying it until you pay out every single repayment and interest right you cannot escape from that this is something i need to stand very very clear on this cannot escape from this right the suffering you have right now will be multiplied you can take it as a full word or anything because concept is different, mindset is different, but it, it will it will strong and strengthen. If you go through this path, of course there are people who will help or not. I can say that, right? It's a very hard life and sometimes because unfettered can be happening within marriage. They say even within marriage and you keep giving birth to children, you can't feed them, right? And then they naturally pass away and all that. That's one that's another business. Okay. They don't have that long life or good condition. And of course we still need to control it. But the condition of this, you know, within your body that you can control is another matter, right? So just like my credit card analogy, you owe something, you pay something. Right? If you're willing to spend that, you need to be willing to pay for it. Otherwise, that will incur even more interest. So paying after the expiry, they will incur 20% interest. Unable to pay will incur a future blacklist in your credit report. I use a very crude way to say it, straightforward. No longer be able to borrow money for bigger purchase that will yield you bigger gain. That means you stop yourself from bigger merits until you clear this debt. So this debt will not go away, it will mark on you, right? Not until you die, until you pay it back, even after you die because you were born just for the purpose of paying it back. That's the point of view that Buddhist teaching will bring in to this argument. Not just purely about religion, about you know what, what they're saying. Because this, this is a fine argument, but it's not strong enough. You need to be strong enough, debt must be paid. Now this kid's supposed to be paying the debt. Now you stop them from doing it. Oh, I don't believe it, it doesn't matter. Look at your body. Next time you aren't able to have children or your children that second children that you actually want have more diseased because your body is not in the right place. The incubator is not correct. The, the, the system, the environment is not in the right place. Of course it will hurt. And, and then you will feel the pain. You're like, oh, I actually want this and now it becomes weak because of this. It hurts both the person who do it and the person who are being done by it, including the father as well. Right, or mother, doesn't matter. All right. Yeah, in one word, consequences, moderation, right? Consequences, moderation. You want a happy life, you still can have this conduct inside. 
a stable relationship, preferably should be marriage. Well, I still have to encourage that be in marriage because you guys are locked in. You're actually serious about this. Whether it works or not in the end, the condition of law is fine. Right now, you're actually serious about it. You're not trying to play around and you do this because you actually cherish each other. That's fine, right? I'm talking about lay Buddhist perspective. But you want to get out of six frames? This needs to let go as well, eventually. Um, it will be when you like 20, 30 years in it, you won't be just doing that. You will have a lot of commitments home loans and all that worry about and then you eventually you want to get out of six screens because the kid is giving you headaches no maybe uh you know not like that 